Hi, Tom from TS Wooden Leather back again in Tarsia series number three, the Flying Pheasant, another Kathy Wise design. This is a great project. This is an intermediate to a harder Intarsia project. I'm getting more and more into the more complex patterns. I'm going to skip over most of the pattern glue up and the cutting out process. You can check out my previous videos if you want to see how all that's done. First, a note about safety, please, if you're doing a lot of sanding, especially with the Dremel tool, those tiny particles of dust can get into your lungs. It's very harmful. Some species can even be toxic. Please wear a respirator or a mask. Now to the flying pheasant. We have the original template. I'm going to use that as my map and I have all the individual pieces cut out and I still have the template pieces glued onto those pieces. I highly suggest you not take those off until you absolutely have to. Taking them off, you can get confused which side is the top, which side is the bottom. Individual feathers look very similar to other ones and not knowing if they go to the left side, the right side, or which group they're in can get really confusing. So I'm going to lay them out first and make sure that I have everything that I need in the right location, make sure I didn't miss any pieces and then I will start taking these pieces off and doing some shaping with Dremel tool and sanding to uh, get the contours that I want. This is the fun part. It's all fun. Just get a bunch of wood. Wood pieces. And the smallest one is only a sixteenth of an inch thick and less than a quarter inch wide around the eye. The, not my eye, the pheasant. Fe pheasant eye. Very small. It's a very small piece. I'm not small. It's small. Okay, so I have the head pieces all done here and it looks really good, but I want it to be more accurate than just leaving it walnut. And the neck and this patch around the head on a pheasant and this piece are kind of this iridescent greenish blue. So I don't normally stain wood, I hate stain, but on this case, I'm gonna use some emerald wood stain and I did a test piece and it turned out pretty good and I just want it to be a little bit more you know accurate and standing out uh, to make it look like a real pheasant head so I'm gonna go ahead and stain it just a little bit So here we have the head, and it turned out pretty good. Maple neckline there. So yeah, that's going to be cool. I'm digging it. So I think how I'm going to attack the rest of this is, I'm going to start with the center pieces of the body, contour those, and then work my way out and back. Through the last few projects I've developed a way of gluing up Antarsia projects with CA glue. I'll usually glue it from the back side in the seams and then use accelerator to harden it rapidly so it doesn't seep through all the cracks. And then I'll go back and grind off the excess so the back is relatively flat for when I'm going to put it on a backer board. I found that CA glue is more than strong enough to hold these little pieces together. And you can also get different colored CA glues if you're worried about seeing it through the gaps. For the smaller pieces, I'll tack them in place with a couple dabs of CA glue. And then once the whole section is in place, I'll go back and fill in some of those gaps to give it a little more strength.
I've gotten to the first set of walnut um, feathers, if you will, that need striping. And you can see in the picture here, pheasants have these very distinctive black stripes that go across their tail feathers and the wingtip feathers. So I've marked them out with just pencil and I've come up with a black dye and I've got a really watery black dye that I'm gonna try and see if that works. I've tested it on another piece of walnut and it worked pretty good. So, eh, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. That is way too wide. So I'm gonna have to get a paintbrush, I think. Just use the very tip. There we go, that's better. Cut out a backer board and just a, a scrap piece of plywood and a quarter inch thick ply just to give it a little bit more stability. Oh, really good, so all I gotta do now is do some uh, finish sanding and um, check for any scratches or anything on here and then uh, do some finishing. So this is the result of my initial foray into Intarsia. These are all Kathy Wise designs, literally hundreds of patterns on her website, wiseintarsia.com. I started this project using the WEN scroll saw. It's an inexpensive scroll saw, more than adequate for doing some of these projects. The arm on the WEN scroll saw doesn't move, so I moved up to the Pegasus 21 inch scroll saw. It's a professional scroll saw, much better design. The arm on the Pegasus moves up and down, gives you eight inches of clearance, gives you much more options for better blades and thinner blades. I learned a lot by using the two different scroll saws. The Pegasus is about $1,200 with a stand. What did you say? The WEN is about $200. To get into scroll sign on a budget, the WEN is a perfect option. But if you want to do more intricate and a lot more projects, I would highly suggest investing in a higher quality saw like the Pegasus. The largemouth bass was the first one I did. It's a simple project. It doesn't have a lot of pieces and they're larger pieces. The walleye, pretty much the same. Then you get into the mallard, which is more of an intermediate and then the flying pheasant, which is an intermediate to a harder. This is all scrap wood. This is all wood that would have probably ended up in my burn pile. Instead, I have beautiful pieces of artwork and I saved a lot of that really expensive exotic wood that normally wouldn't get utilized for any other projects. I am addicted to Intarsia and there are gonna be a lot more Intarsia projects in the future. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thanks again for supporting my channel. Like, subscribe, send to a friend. Until next time, love you. see ya.